Human trafficking is a form of modern slavery that occurs in every state. 40 million people worldwide are victims, and it's happening in our own backyard. Growing up around human trafficking in Haiti, our next guest is no stranger to the illegal trade. After moving to Kelloland and learning about the dangers in South Dakota, she decided she wanted to do something to help make a difference and raise awareness. Abigail Elliott is joining us in the studio today to share more about how a college assignment got her thinking about how to turn her idea into reality. This led her to create the upcoming Masquerade Charity Ball benefiting Call to Freedom. She's also got a DIY mask for those who have tickets. Welcome, Abigail. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. Yes, thank you so much for coming. I want to get started with this. You're going to tell me how to do it, this little DIY masquerade mask, and then we can get into conversation because I know you have a lot of interesting things to share about this. So, how do I get started with this DIY mask? Well, to begin, you're going to print out a mask template. And then after that, you're going to get a piece of parchment paper and lay that over the template and then place whatever tool. You can get this in a variety of colors and you lay that over the parchment paper and then you just begin tracing the lines of the hot glue gun. Pretty simple. So simple. I didn't know you could make a mask with just hot glue too. So really only a few supplies needed, maybe some extra gems to decorate when you're done, some string to tie it around, some tool or lace, the parchment paper and the glue stick and glue gun. There you go. All right, so you said to trace it. So I'm going to do that right now. And while I do that, let's get started about talking about the college project first. And tell me how that led you to doing this. Yeah, so I'm enrolled in a program called Unbound. And basically, that's a project-based learning education program. And I was challenged to turn an idea into a reality. And that's kind of how this project all started. And I wanted to, I've always wanted to attend a masquerade charity ball. And I wanted it to benefit a local charity event. Um, and I stumbled across Call of Freedom. I fell in love with their mission, and yeah, that's kind of how this all got started. So that's how the event got started, but really your, your passion for wanting to help organizations like Call of Freedom that are involved with human trafficking started back when you were living in Haiti. Yes. So I moved to Haiti when I was seven years old, and I was exposed to a lot of the harsh realities. Um, very different from America and it was in that time that I learned about human trafficking and I wasn't really aware of what that meant at the time because I saw Haiti through the lens of a child but um, when I lived there we had a girl living with us um, her name was Oberlin and she was five years older than me yet looked just like I did as a seven-year-old and um, wow yeah it was crazy but and so having that involvement too and learning once you got older and learned a little bit more and understood really what it was how did that make you feel and what really made you want to get involved and make a difference? Well, I was devastated to learn that this actually happened. This doesn't just happen in Haiti. It happens right here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And when I learned that, um, when looking through the Call of Freedom website, I just felt compelled to do whatever I can to help these women and sometimes men in these situations. I couldn't help in Haiti, but I can help now. So. In Haiti, was it more known that this was happening? I know here in South Dakota, you you really don't see it, but right. it is happening. Yeah, it did happen in Haiti. It was just commonplace. It was just, it was actually custom. The girl who was living with us was called a Restavik, which is what the Haitians call a child slave. So yeah, it's just pretty normal in Haiti. You expect it. Yeah. So now I've outlined it. Okay. And basically I probably want to let it dry before maybe going over it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so then once I have the second outline done and I let it dry and then I cut it out, Yes. Then I basically can just... Bedazzle it. Bedazzle <laughs> add it. Add some jewels, add some feathers, maybe some more tool if that's what you like. So tell me a little bit about this Masquerade Charity Ball event. What's going to be happening? Yeah, so at this ball, um, it's happening May 6th, uh, this Friday. Um, the doors open at 6 o'clock, and we're actually having seven local chefs from the community come and donate their time, their food, and their service. going to be some amazing food, so definitely recommend to come. But we're also having a band called the White Keys from Minneapolis. Um, and we're having both a live and silent auction, and can I just say how thankful I am for the community? They have been so incredibly generous. So we have some pretty amazing items I'm very excited to share with you guys this Friday. Is this your first event, too, that you've ever coordinated? Yeah. Yes, it is. So were there any challenges with that? Oh, absolutely. I think just mustering up the confidence to um, basically pitch my idea to these people was very intimidating. Um, but I've learned to... Um, I don't know, just trust the Lord in these endeavors and yeah. 
press into that. And then with this event too, are there tickets still available? I know there was a soft close, but if people are interested? Yes, so we have about, say, 15 tickets left, and you can find those at ctf.eventbrite.com, and yeah, you can purchase them there. So only a few left, so really head yes. there right now yes. in our commercial break if you want to get one because only a few left. But if you do have your tickets already, we do have this great mask that we're finishing up. I'm letting mm -hmm. it dry, but if I don't finish, we'll show the final product that we have sitting mm -hmm. over here. But a little bit more just with your willing willingness to help and to put organizations on like this and events to get involved. Do you see anything in the future after this event that you still want to do to help get involved? Yeah, I've really enjoyed this event planning process and um, I'm actually going to be a volunteer for Call to Freedom for their October breakfast and that's kind of where you learn more about Call to Freedom and what they do, whereas this Masquerade Charity Ball is just an introduction to that. But if you really want to learn more about Call to Freedom, the October breakfast is where you want to come. Tell me a little bit more too about the college class and how it maybe really helped you to have the confidence to go forward with an idea like this. Yeah, so this program, Unbound, really has an emphasis on leadership and they really want um, that more real world experience versus in classroom scenarios. So for the last year, they've been really prepping me on having this confidence and really trying to change the world and not even like change the whole world, but just change your small portion of it because it doesn't take a thousand people to make a difference. It starts with you. And that's what I've learned through this project. It's no longer just my school project. It's suddenly the whole community is involved. And it's been really amazing to see everyone come together and unite for this project. I know it is your first event. Mm -hmm. And as far as raising money for Call of Freedom, do you have any goal in mind that you hope to reach? It's probably hard to make that, Very. that number one, if you've never done one before, but do you have any goal? Hmm, I would say maybe, and it's a big one, but I'd maybe say $40,000 would be a great, amazing goal. I'd, be, I'd love to do that for Call of Freedom and just bless them in that way. And is there any way that if someone can't attend this event but they still would love to give or donate, can they still do that? Absolutely. So we have a Facebook page, it's called Masquerade Charity Ball da, uh, dash Call to Freedom and there you can donate via PayPal or you can write even a check and send it to Call to Freedom. So there's lots of ways. Going toward a great organization. All right, so this is still drying but let's pull over this final product and I'm gonna try it on if I can face the right way. So basically this whole mask is made with hot glue. Yes ma'am. And then some tool. Mm -hmm. And you were mentioning too before we got started that you can actually get hot glue in colors too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So super, super easy. I think this looks really fun. She added some purple sparkles to it. So just tie it around and you're ready to go. Thank you so much Abigail for coming in and thank you for all you're doing to help call the freedom. Yeah, my pleasure.